Becky, we're stood here in Bridge North in this huge facility, but perhaps we can rewind a bit and find out how we got here. Yeah, it happened about 18 months ago, two years ago. Um, yeah, March's LEP worked with some of the local employers to get them together to see what skills were missing in the region. Um, a large meeting was held of all the big sort of manufacturers and SMEs in the in the region at Granger and Worrell, um, and it was brought about that there was a, there was a big skill shortage, um, and they asked. Uh, what they thought we should do about it and they put a tender across um, to say uh, to bid for this, the skills programme. Uh, the four partners that came together were Granger and Worrell, Classic Motor Cars, Salop Design and Engineering and Income Training um, to form a bid that went into the LEP to look at developing this. So how big is it? It's 36,000 square foot um, developed into um, practical off-the-job training as well as some uh, auditorium area and uh, commercial business. Um. So what skills are they going to learn here? The ranges from very basic fitting, turning, milling, um, to right the way through to high-end CNC machining, then going across onto automotive, um, so doing predominantly vehicle restoration, looking at classic cars, but also doing sort of light vehicle maintenance as well. So how do apprentices, how do they get involved? Uh, we've got a number of job vacancies. All apprentices have to be employed from day one. Um, so what we've got is a number of vacancies available on our website and through the National Apprenticeship Service. We get them to have a little look, come and do some events like we're doing and getting them in to see the premises, but also get on there, apply, send us their details, and then we get in and do one-to-one -one interviews. Very much about trying to marry the employer with the learner so as that the, the skill set's there and that there's something that's sort of synergy between the two. Um, and I know looking around, it looks far from finished, but it's nearly there, isn't it? When's it open? Yeah, we are looking to open on the 4th of September for the first intake of apprentices, with a big, looking to do a big open day towards the end of September after everything's sort of settled in. Chris, how is Salop Design helping NCMT? Well, what we're doing at this centre, we've got a training centre that we started in 2015 with Incom uh, to train apprentices and engineers for the future of the whole region. And then in 2016, we started with Classic Motor Cars, Granger and Worrell and Incom with the idea of coming up with a bespoke training centre for the whole of the Marches region. And what does it offer? We offer here level two, three and for engineering. We're also looking at universities so we can go on to higher, ed higher education and higher degrees. And really this is a training centre with enough kit in it to be training the engineers of the future. We've got high-end CNC, we've got metrology labs, we've got basic engineering as well. We're also going to have motor vehicle and a dyno so we can do all sorts of things on site. So trying to get rid of the skill gap again? Well, exactly. We need to be, certainly with Brexit, we already had a skills gap before Brexit and before the poll. We're going to have an even bigger skills gap if we don't have free movement of people. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do, we're going to continue to be the movers and makers of this country, which we need to be to push the UK economy. We need to start training our own people. And will you have engineers here? Yes, we will. We're going to have a couple of engineers here. We've also got some at our existing site. So we've got 36 on our existing site in Shrewsbury. We're going to take another 64 engineering apprentices here in September. Mm -hmm. So that's nearly a total of 100 jobs we created between our companies over the last three years. Mike, what's your involvement with the MCMT? We're a partner, one of the four partners, and our interest in MCMT is that it's very important to us because our business with restoring these classic cars, we need a skill set which is very, very unique and obviously it takes years to train some of our people. So it's important that we're keeping Jaguar's heritage alive for future generations and therefore we have to have people who can use the English wheel for rolling metal, we need people who can trim, we need engine builders, we need fabricators, we need specialist paint preparers and the MCMT is very important to us because we can develop those skills in here and really keep a flow of people coming through our business. And it's fair to say they're more traditional techniques aren't they so one presumes quite difficult to recruit. That's extremely so Joe but allied to that really the only thing we outsource at the moment is the actual engineering part of the we keep the original engine blocks and the cylinder heads, but we have to have them machined. We're hoping now to bring that into here, so that will allow, again, some of our people to become precision engineers, work on our own engines, and then we will have everything in-house. 
So I guess you've got this education and resource that's built, been, uh, been built around what you acquire. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, so it's very important to us. Our chairman, Peter Newmark, um, he has wanted to do this for a long time. So when he saw this opportunity, he immediately sort of rose to the challenge. And it, could, and it couldn't get much closer? No, it couldn't. No, it's ideal for us. Yeah, certainly. So we're stood here at Granger Moles Machining Division. What has this business got to do with Nextdoor? So the Marches Centre of Manufacturing Technology is established by four companies as a consortium. Granger Wall is one of those shareholders. Basically why we've got together the consortium with Classic Motor Car Solid Design and Engineering and Income Training is really to try and resolve the skills gap that we have as a business but also that we have across the whole region. In August 15 we got together the larger employers and everybody said if we don't do something different we're going to cannibalise each other, we're just going to steal each other's skills and we're not going to be able to grow. So we've taken the, the onus upon ourselves to actually make that leap of faith, set up a training facility and do something different. Is it fair to say it might be slowing your growth down, the lack of available labour? Certainly and some of, the, some of the skills that we don't have currently Maybe that we don't actually know we don't have them. So some of the robotic skills, the automation skills, things that are now becoming technology that is almost off the shelf, we don't have the way to apply them. So part of the, the process with our development centre is to actually be able to add to productivity, improve our, our growth, also our competitiveness and therefore our profitability. And you've got an interesting dynamic, haven't you? Because you've got a senior role here, but also you're managing director of the marches. Yeah, I like to be busy. So, um, so four days a week I'm on the project as MD of the MCMT. One day a week I'm still looking after the systems as director at Granger and Warren. So tell me about the engineering club that I've heard a lot about. So alongside training and development, we've recognised that in our region there's lots of small and micro business who actually don't have access to their own engineering workshops. We've got all the top level kits, so we're going to allow access to that equipment like a gym membership, so you pay a monthly subscription fee, but the induction will be on metrology equipment, CNC equipment, whereas you'd normally get an induction on a jogger and a you know, running machine. Then our club members can come and use the equipment on site. They develop the next product generation. So they win from next generation products. We win from a little bit of revenue and our supply base win because hopefully they'll purchase that set of equipment in the future. And how many apprentices are you likely to see in the next few years? The target is 68, we can take up to 68 this September, pretty much on a, on a rolling basis we'll be aiming for about between 81 and 90 on the, on the future years. So it's quite an ambitious scheme, but if we don't do this, then actually we're not going to be able to grow as a region. So Matt, this machine shop, it's full of the latest technology, what is it you do here? So we're, we're particularly focused on um, precision engineering, but heads and blocks is our, our skill set, some sumps as well, so it's automotive predominantly. Fully air conditioned, so uh, plus or minus around half a degree throughout the year. Obviously, metal moves, so we've got to have that consistency. We've got a suite of different tools from pallet systems right the way to single machines. We've got full metrology suite, four CMMs downstairs. Again, fully air conditioned. We're measuring to about one micron accuracy. We're machining to anywhere between 10 and 20 microns accuracy. So, really top end kit. Customers, Jaguar Land Rover, the Bentleys, the Porsches, the Aston Martins, you know, the, the top end guys.